Welcome back. You're still watching Business Morning on Channels Television and we're broadcasting live from Lagos, Nigeria. On this midweek edition today, we're going to be focusing on oil and gas as well as the automotive policy. But the first conversation I'm going to be having this morning is going to be around Delta State beyond oil. We know that uh, as much as possible, the state's government has tried to diversify its interest away from oil and begin to look at other sectors that can grow the economy because of what we know is happening on the global scale more and more um, shale gas and the rest of it is beginning to be discovered and so less importance on oil that is imported from us as um, as as a net importer or exporter, I beg your pardon. Well, to speak more on this, I'm being joined on the program by the Commissioner for Commerce and Industry of Delta State, Kinsley Emu, and uh, Bismarck Rewani, who is uh, the, I beg your pardon, he's the Chairman, Delta State Economic Management Team, and the Chief Executive Officer of Financial Derivatives Company Limited. So many caps you're wearing, Mr. Rewani. Thank but you. Thank you so much for coming on the program this morning. Thank you. Well, just before we start this conversation, over the weekend, we know that um, the governor was in town to meet with um, investors investors on the private sector. So let's quickly listen to that report so that we refresh our minds on the issues that we should be talking about on this conversation. It's a business gathering, and every discussion centers on non-oil business in Delta State. We have came to the federal government program of power. We have invested in the generative plants that have been privatized. We have also invested in the distribution, um, uh, the disco, the Bini distribution disco that has been privatized. We have also invested in that. Why are we doing that? We believe that if we invest in both the generation and the distribution, uh, first we'll be in a position to ensure that this body distribution and the, 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 the generation people give us a lot more power. For these investors, this is one profitable outing. If now, properly so managed, would service. boost the economy of More Nigeria, not just that of Delta State. States. You know, very early in the day, we decided that we were going to engage constructive in the private sector, both for public-private partnership, but also to plant the seeds of investment, which will multiply itself and create capital for it. But the good thing for us, looking as an independent from outside looking in, is that the baseline, the foundation seems to have been set. You have a high level of literacy, but what they must now do is convert that literacy into actual fit for purpose employment. What you'd also need is a tinkering. When you look at the uh, ease of doing business indicators, there's a need to tweak about a bit to improve the position of Delta simply because the basic foundation that is required for all of that is already being provided. This is not the first time this group will hold such a meeting and it would certainly not be the last. Loretta Chioga, Channels Television News. Well, that uh, report actually sets the tone for the conversation we're going to be having this morning on the program. And as I said, I have the Commissioner for Commerce and Industry of Delta State, Mr. Kinsley Imo, and Mr. Bismarck Rewani, who is the Chairman, Delta State Economic Management Team, and Chief Executive Officer, Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying with me. Um, Mr. Rewani, I'll start with you. It's not the first time that um, the team has put together a forum of this nature. But why did you choose this time? to host another one? Um, let me put it this way. First of all, why did we choose this time? And why did we choose Lagos? After all, Delta State is headquartered in Asaba. Now, Lagos is the hub and the commercial capital of West Africa. This is where the investors are, and this is where the manufacturers and traders are. The markets are here. So what we're trying to do is to sell the concept of Delta beyond oil, not Delta without oil, Delta beyond oil. That which means that the Delta state economy as part of the Nigerian economy will be more optimal than what it is today. Oh. And uh, the only way to do this is to accomplish an integration of both private sector ideas with public sector ideas to come up with a much more productive economy. And the basis, why are we doing this? We're doing this because Delta state has the fourth largest economy in the country. It has a rate of inflation 
which proxies the national inflation rate at 8 percent, it was higher than that. We have an unemployment rate higher than the national average. So there are some weaknesses and there are some strengths there. What we're trying to do here is to achieve a sense of comparative advantage to incentivize the private sector to come in there. And we brought the entire government machinery of Delta State to Lagos, the commercial sector. So we met with investors. This wasn't just a forum. This was an, an investor workshop, in which case all the investors had one and on ones with the government. Hmm. And whatever approvals they required, whatever incentives they required, they, got, they were able to achieve that at that point. No. So <coughs> the action points will be what happens after this. Okay, well, Mr. Rwani, you know, looking at the fact that uh, you're trying to woo investors into the state, one would no. have expected that such a meeting would hold in Delta State so that they would see firsthand what the government is doing as regards moving beyond oil. No, I, I understand that. But to show that road shows globally everywhere in the world are not necessarily held in the country or in the state where the, that, that country operates or whatever it is. Mm. You have road shows, you go to where the investors are located and where the manufacturers are located and take your case to them. Because don't forget that capital is scarce and these guys have options. Mm. So we are coming out here and we had the best of the best. We had Shell, we had Chevron, we had Schlumberger, we had MTN. We had everybody that was anybody in the, in the investment world in this country. We had the stock exchange and we had all the PFAs, all of them located there. This is Delta State, this is the opportunity. Is there anything you want, you want the government to do for you? any infrastructure, uh, you know, infrastructure commitments and all of that. We had all of that done. Mm. And we got a lot of positive response. And we are changing the whole concept of government waiting to be approached, of now government going out to meet investors to actually market the investors to come in to, to engage. And that is what uh, was happening here. Okay. The question is that we also know that one of the major issues confronting the Niger Delta, in which Delta is part of it, is the question of the risk. Kidnap and ransom risk. Yeah, and we'll, get to, we'll and get to that. The and of the therefore, we, to allay all of these things, we put all of these things on the table, and it was a very frank, honest, and transparent discussion. Okay, just before we get to what really happened as yes. regards uh, how the investors responded, let me just ask you, Ms. Emu, you're in Delta State. Mm -hmm. what, apart from this forum, what other things has um, the state actually done to try to convince investors, woo investors, to come to the state. All right, thank you so much. Um, Delta State has done a whole lot because we can't be uh, launching out without, first of all, uh, doing some developmental programs. Um, His Excellencies, which is the state's agenda, uh, there are three points agenda there. You have uh, peace and security, you have human capital development, and then you have development of physical infrastructures. And then when you have all of this, they are addressing the specific needs of the state because it's looked at the peculiarity of the state, it's done the SWOT analysis and say, these are the three critical areas that can take us out of the woods. Remember, we're about 4.5 million people. Like uh, BJ said, we're, we're the fourth largest economy. Oil and gas, oil is, um, is probably accounts for about 80, 90% of our GDP. And that is challenging. Meanwhile, oil does not even provide employment up to 30, more than 30 percent. So it means that we have we're come back to a traditional farm and agriculture that Delta State is noted for. We have 18,000 square kilometers, there about 60 percent of it is land, 40 percent is water. So you have massive fishing going on because that's a default uh, tr uh, um, uh, job, the default labor for people in the water and river and areas. We have 163 kilometer coastline, which means also that the entire area could be developed for aquaculture and tourism. It's just, oh. Is it just aquaculture? You're aquaculture and tourism. And it, uh, look, at, look at the land. The land is being put to use for agricultural produce. So we have looked at, the, we have looked at the entire place and then the state has decided that we do the following things. Power infrastructure is a major challenge in Nigeria. We are the first to have started the independent power plants, which is, uh, which is nearing completion. 128 megab megawatts. And we're nearing completion. And then we have also one of the states that have invested in Bini Disco, in Saple and Willy uh, power plants, in to the tune of five billion, and that's very significant. Mm. That means that we have we, we identified the, pro the challenge of power and decided to tackle them frontally. Even before unbundling, we have started creating our own programs, and we're also looking at uh, captive power plants with uh, uh, one of some of these banks around. And if you move to capital human capital development. 
we have established enough schools and created enough produ products in terms of programs in terms of entrepreneurship development. We have well over 1,206 primary schools. We have well over 465 secondary schools. We have nine technical colleges. We have uh, nine, we have uh, four polytechnics, all designed to provide technical education. We have also not left them in the state in which we met them. We have also developed 40 model schools. Mm -hmm. we, have developed 13, we have developed 13 special schools. If you go to SPC Asaba, those are, that's one of the special schools. It's, it's a total package for those areas. So okay, apart, from, sorry, sorry, apart from developing those things, we have also addressing the soft issues of um, uh, the human capital to clean them up and be able to function properly in those schools.